In the springtime, the edges of the pond are fringed with reeds of young leaves, and the stream is half choked with flowering water plants. If you look among the roots of the reeds and flowers, you may find a curious substance which reminds you only too forcibly of semolina pudding. Actually, the little black specks are frog's eggs, each of which is protected by a coating of transparent jelly. It takes the eggs 10 days to hatch out into tadpoles. But as we can't expect you to sit there watching all that time, we've speeded up the action a bit. And now that the 10 days are over, the tadpole leaves its egg and travels slowly and rather jerkily through the jelly. This journey is terribly hard work for such very young tadpoles, and they have to stop and take breath on the surface of the jelly. And talking of taking breath, notice the feathery trimmings they wear on each side. These are the gills through which they breathe. In a close view, you can see the blood circulating through the gills and even count the heartbeats. The tadpole looks now rather like a figure in a nightmare, but soon the external gills are replaced by internal ones. And then the tadpoles are just oval bodies, complete with tails. Being strict vegetarians, they hunt about for pieces of plants to eat. But alas, all the inhabitants of the pond are not equally vegetarian in diet. The larva of the Dotiscus beetle likes a good meat meal. He is particularly partial to a nice juicy tadpole, and terrible duels are fought to the death. Tadpoles that survive such dangers develop a somewhat freckled complexion and they have an intelligent and rather soulful appearance. At the base of the tail, a small hump now appears on each side. These hubs develop into a pair of hind legs. Then the tadpole begins to grow a pair of front legs. Watch carefully and on the left you will see a toe just coming through the skin.
complete with four legs, the tadpole now absorbs its tail, develops lungs instead of gills, and one fine day, it's a frog and not a tadpole any longer. The frog has no weapons and believes that he who turns and hops away will live to hop another day. In slow motion, his leaps look very like those of a Russian dancer. To keep a good look out for enemies, he wears his eyes perched aloft. They can be drawn below the surface of the head at the approach of danger. Another safeguard is a membrane that can rise from the lower lid and, being transparent, protects the eye without interfering with the sight. Having no ribs, the frog breathes by taking air into its mouth, stopping the nostrils with the tongue, and then forcing a mouthful of air into its lungs. This action causes a pulsing in the throat. Besides being useful for breathing, the tongue is also handy at meal times. The frog's cousin, the toad, will now demonstrate in slow motion how he dines. That was a bad start. The frog may not be very intelligent, but a watch glass won't keep it away from worms. And if a very big meal is to be tackled, it knows how to use its front feet as hands. The back feet are webbed to enable their owner to swim. This is not an animated road map, but a piece of the webbing from the frog's foot very highly magnified. The webbing is very transparent and it is easy to watch the blood coursing through the veins. This is how the other inhabitants of the pond see the frog from below. The undersurface of the water reflects just as much as the upper surface does. And so, as he swims about, the frog and his reflection make some quaint patterns. At length, tired of the water, he climbs back to land. And the last the pond dwellers see of the frog is a webfoot waving farewell.